Good glorious morning everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Father, son, dangle going on today in the kayaks. Been on a little kayak trend lately with all the flooding in the lakes. And um, today is a special day because I get to spend it with my pops. We got a small lake. I wouldn't really call it a pond, but we're fishing on a, a small lake today in the kayaks. Nice little crisp morning. We got up extra early to get out here. There's some grass around the edges. Uh, sun's just coming up. I'm hoping there might be a little bit of a top water bite. But what I'm also hoping to get on is a good worm bite. I haven't been on a really good worm bite. And uh, this little lake has um, some timber in it. I see some grass lines, things like that. I want to really try fishing the Mondo worm. This is normally when I break it out and fishing in lakes, out deep, fishing ledges, brush piles, things like that. But also really good in, uh, in small lakes and ponds. And so I haven't really done a whole lot of that with, with the Mondo worm. I've done it with bigger worms in the past. So I know it's got potential. Sun's just coming up. Don't want to miss out on the opportunity for that morning strike. So let's get the ax in the water. Let's get dangling. to you by one of my favorite sponsors favorite fishing usa y'all have seen favorite a lot on this channel and uh, from all the Guggen squad guys and we've got a lot of stuff in the works and excited about some things coming out and i've been testing out some some new reels and of course my favorite rod to throw my worms and jigs on is my signature series LFG series big sexy I mostly fish the big sexy series they've also got some special deals going on for 4th of July so make sure to go check them out if you're in the market for a a rod or a combo uh, they've got everything from the summits which are top of the line high-end ultra sensitive rods down to very affordable uh, rods as well so I've got all big sexies with me right now which are my my favorite line of, of rods go check them all out link is at the top of the description thank you favorite for sponsoring today's video and now it's time to catch some fish on those favorite rods you got one yet dad Not yet. disappointed I'm gonna go with the frog watch me twerk here we go now into the Sun small little popping frog here Throwing it on braid today, not making that mistake last time. Oh, dad's got one on. You got a big one on? This coming in for the landing pass by get in there whopper plopper oh yeah mondo <laughs> nicely done dad thank you one of the day that's a freaking dandy to start out with lucky feather in the hat yeah oh. what a healthy nice fish Nice one. Yeah. Huh? All right, let's go, big guy. Back into the deeps. Back into the deeps. Nice. Nice way to start the morning. I'd say. Hey, I'm one up on you. You are. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. Okay. Well, that was good times right there. I need to get me one. Plopper, gotta love it. Oh, well, there's one. Oh, God. Oh, it came off. Oh, 
just had one boil on it right there. Ooh, yikes, that's nasty. Fire out the Mondo. Got him. Oh, shoot. I'm going at least five out when you're throwing the Mondo 10 inch worm. Really, uh, you know, if you're throwing these kinds of big worms, a six inch or a six aught can be even better. But I'm trying to float this thing up top pretty high. This might not be a bad idea. It's just uh, fish is going to really have to gulp it. Oh my God, look at the boil right there. Look at the boil right there. Okay, I can't stand it any longer. I've got to put on the Texas rig. So I've got a 5 16 ounce tungsten. Going with a 4 aught. I don't have my 5 aughts with me, but it's what I'd normally go with. For this, Dad just caught one on a Texas rig Mondo. I think it's just time to switch. It's getting a little windy. I've had some bites on that wait list, but they're. I think a lot of them are bluegill. And then I've had, I, I know two were bass, but I set the hook a little too quick. Two of my favorite colors for summer for big worms are um, some sort of plum or blue flack. And then this color right here, which is called red bug. Something about it, I don't know. Red and purple worms in the summer, even in the fall. Seem to, seem to get it done. I'm going to pinch the plastic up, put the hook in like that, and then just remove that little tab that's just to keep the tail doing its thing, doing what it's supposed to do, working. Got him off a tree. Mm. Okay, that's my first fish right there. Just going to the Texas rig, I guess, made that difference. Something about it swimming. They were just uh, not being as aggressive with it. So, nice little healthy fish. Let you go, buddy. That took about four casts. Second one on the Mondo. That was about as soon as it hit the water, though. Wasn't much, much going on with that one. Ah. Okay, buddy. You need to get a little bit bigger. That one hit it as soon as it got in there. I haven't had a problem hooking them on this four rod hook yet. The two bites I've had on the Texas rig anyway, if that's worked out, but definitely like to have that five. Another one. Working that worm slow in that brush. Better fish right there. Oh man, yeah, he hosed it. One more jump. Yeah. One more delicious jump. Come here. Oh yeah. There's a nice fish. Got it hooked. Hooked him good. Ah, there goes that hook. Look at that nice, healthy, delicious bass. All right, man, you go have yourself a good, good day with some more Slurpees. Sorry I had to trick you, but it's just, it's just what I do. Looks like switching to the Texas rig Mondo worm has been the key. So this is, uh, this is like one of those lakes that's 
uh, it's a club lake. My dad's a part of the, the club. So they got these feeders in here that feed these bluegill and the bluegill get massive. Like I've had some bluegill take my, my Wanda worm and I thought, I thought they were for sure bass and they weren't. But if you've never fished a place like that or a lake that has big bluegill in it and that's the main forage, the bass hit your baits so hard, whether it's a crankbait or worm or whatever, they're used to crunching down on things that have spines and, and uh, you know, they're broad, big bluegill are, and if they're eating crawfish, it's the same way, they just crush it. Versus a fish that's used to eating shad, like in a lake or something like that, that's got a lot of easy, you know, the shad are easy to digest. There's like no spines or anything on them, just little hot dogs. So it's actually a lot of fun and kind of scary when you get some bites. My dad said he missed one on a frog, that was crazy. But even though they feed the bluegill, and you think it would be just like crazy, crazy good, the way it's managed and everything, it's still still tough. You still have to work for your bites, and I've, I've lost quite a few. But what I figured out is that as the sun is coming up, I think this is gonna be more key, these, uh, these brush piles. There's brush piles that are out here. I've got my electronics, I can, I can see them. And there's been uh, a couple of specific areas that like I see the brush pile throw in and just works slow. And this doesn't matter if it's a, a pond that has a brush around it or a, you know, a small lake or a gigantic lake. Uh, brush piles and timber, like pole timber in the summer, always one of my favorite places to fish, uh, especially a worm. A worm or a big uh, creature bait or a jig too. I like to throw a jig a lot. But the Mondo worm is literally designed, I designed it for fishing in that type of cover uh, versus like a long ribbon tail worm that's the same length that gets, uh, it gets caught in the branches a lot more. You get, get caught up with that long ribbon tail. It kind of does like a snake effect around the branches. I've also tried cranking, which is another key summertime pattern uh, to get into that brush, crank that pole timber, just crank and anywhere, rip wrap. I just love cranking in the summertime. It's usually how I start the day if top water isn't working. So I've tried a little bit of that. That hasn't worked yet. Oh, there he is. Come here, baby. Oh, yeah. Ooh, got a little weird on that hook set. Right in that brush. Oh, yeah, he chomped on it for a second. Woo! Come on now. Fish. go absolutely bamboozled it and hung on to it which is good got a little thing going on with this mouth there good healthy fish though a little trick if you want to make your worms last a little bit longer they get torn up like that you can bite off about a half inch or just take you a sharp knife just pop off the top then just re-rig in a fresh spot. You should be okay. You don't get quite as good uh, cover uh, penetration. You got that flat spot right there now. It doesn't come through the cover as good. You can make your Mondos or just all your stick plastics last a little bit longer that way. Or you can just go get more. I would greatly appreciate that. Coming in that. for a little lunch break, a little halftime. Halftime report right now, y'all. I think I've got four. How many you got? Uh, I have five. You have five. Dad is definitely in the lead. I actually think I have three. I may be scooting the truth there. Um, and he's definitely got the biggest. First one he caught on top water. Five and a half, probably. Nice okay. fish. Uh, top water was definitely moved this morning with all this. Now you can really see the grass. And it's thick up there, up shallow. So I'm surprised I haven't been able to get them on a, on a weightless rig. They really seem to like the more of the Texas rig. Little blade hook, the little swim bait on it. And I'm gonna be throwing that on one of the new favorite reels that I'm testing out. The old red. Looks like that one would be nice on the big sexy. But it feels good. It's got an oversized handle. It's got really heavy drag on it. I think the drag's like at least 22 pounds. 
and uh, feels really good in the hand. Um, smooth, no, no noises, uh, cast really good. Hopefully we can put that big time drag to the test with a 25 pound bass. I think that'd be a good way to really test this reel out. So, a little high hopes, but you gotta, you gotta keep it positive. You ready? Let's go. Oh, by the way, look at dad's, look at dad's sticker collection. MTB sticker collection. I think you have, looks like you have all of them. I'm uh, collecting them all, trying to. Covers up my secrets. <laughs> How's the feather in the hat doing? Well, you know, I'm ready to catch one that long. The feather in the hat was good. I put it in and I made a cast and I caught it, you know, five and a half. Pretty much, you stuck with it. All right, well, I've let you have your fun. Now it's time to uh, pull into the lead here. Uh, yeah. Okay, for round two here, I'm going to throw this swim bait, and then I'm also going to throw a trench hog instead of a mondo. I'm going to go with a different large creature bait. Round two. Round two. Here we go. You already hooked up? Yep. You serious? What do you, what do you get them on? Chatter. Chatter. That is an old, old fish. You're it right, is. Dad. Look at that, look at that uh, mark on him. Yeah, he's got a nasty goober situation there. Watch out now. Absolute tanker, though. Okay. Okay. Round two, you're kicking ass. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Back into the deeps. Well, uh, old Big Bull is putting it on Little Bull today. There's some toads in here. I think I need to pull about a seven or eight just to just to keep him in check. But if not, I'm pretty proud of LFD today. Oh my gosh, one just ate it right by the boat. I missed to just stop the last clip. Oh, man, tattooed it. It's not a big one. It's like my dad's. Oh, oh, oh my gosh, they're feeding out in front of me. They're feeding out in front of me. Might be some small schoolers or something. Crankbait fish on the paws. Come off. Just got out one of the Guggen Squad. Square bells, the banger, baby. Standard banger. Oh, hooked a good one on the crank. Oh yeah, that's a good fish. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Either that or I got him foul hooked. I think he's pretty good. Woo, pulling that drag, son. Pulling that drag. Oh yeah, it's a good fish. It's a big five, six pounder. He got it. Come here, baby. Oh, yeah, baby. Mm. Look at that. Switch up to that crankbait. Hey, that's a good fish. That's one of my biggest fish on, uh, on one of the, the bangers so far. I've caught one about six and a half. This one's five I would say so nice I like this color a lot too yeehaw on that one right there yes sir y'all I am so excited about these new Guggen cranks I wanted to just throw Mondo worm out deep today but it seems like they are kind of suspended and feeding around this grass as soon as my dad caught one on Chatterbait, I was like ah, uh oh don't know if they're on the bottom I'm using a seven foot medium heavy on this and a, a, and a uh, 15 pound fluorocarbon so this is more like structure cranking if you're fishing around you know grass you got to rip it out of or trees or docks rather than like an open water with 10 to 12 pound test medium medium action rod this one you've got a little bit of power on and it's okay with these hooks you know they're not going to bend out as easy. Our hooks on the Guggen cranks come with triple grips, must have triple grips. So 
It's a really good hook. A lot of people buy those hooks and put them on their crankbaits specifically. So ours come with them and they're strong, strong enough to power crank with. Okay, coming up to one of these bluegill feeders on a point. Kind of thinking this crankbait will look like one of these bluegills up there. If a bass is hanging around, I'll smack this thing, thinking it's one of the bluegill hanging around the feeder. Got him. Oh, yeah. Got him on that hump. Sounds decent, feels decent. Nice fish, it's pulling me right towards the hump though. I wanna stay away from it. Ooh, yeah. Two biggest fish so far, coming on the banger. Phew. Uh, well, it's probably Ty is my second biggest fish, but. Eight, uh, didn't really eat it that good, but those triple grips got him. Okay, see you buddy. That was an awesome hit. There's a little hump out here. And uh, I just threw over the top of it, kind of ripped it out of the grass and paused it and boom, hit it. So it's telling me that the sun is making these fish suspend for some reason. Normally that puts them on the bottom, but just depending on cover, water clarity, I don't know, just specific days, sometimes they will just suspend. Oh, there we go. Got another one. Little guy. Little tot. Easy now. See you, little guy. Uh, again, the paws. Kind of letting it float up above that cover. And they're just looking up and chasing bait in that zone. The June Texas sun is clearly upon us. Actually, we're almost in July right now. So we have got to fish this dam one more time since we've seen the most activity there and then we're gonna take it in. Dad is one fish ahead of me right now for the afternoon. Total, I think he's two fish ahead of me. And he's got one more big fish than me. So it's time to make it happen if we're going to. There he is, got him. Got one. Uh -oh. I think it's a good one. Oh man, he's healthy. Just grab that back hook. Got him on that triple grip. All right. Woo -wee. Yes. One more fish and I tied that for the day. Oh, got him. Yes. Tied you in numbers. Oh, he's caught. He's, he's in my vessel. <sighs> Does that make us tied or you want to hit? That makes us tied for numbers overall. Okay. All righty, y'all. It is lunchtime and we are getting out of here. I think we had a pretty good morning. I wish I would have capitalized a little bit more on those topwater bites. I had two nice ones on a buzz bait. And then my dad had some pretty good blow ups too. He had a good blow up on a frog and then obviously he caught the biggest one of the day on a whopper plopper. And then the bite slowed down and then we picked up moving baits and then we were catching them suspended. So it's almost just kind of like they, they got up when the sun came up, which is odd. I love these crankbaits, y'all. These bangers, um, the recons. I tried fishing the recon for a little while, but they didn't like it deep. They were just up there in the water column uh, about three or four feet deep. So a little square bill perfect for that task.
And if y'all are wondering about those hard baits, they are coming at you very shortly. If you watched my live stream the other day, I kind of explained it, but uh, they are going to be here mid-July. So if you want to get your hands on them first, they're going to be at shopcarls.com, which I'll have a link for. Or if you are uh, fortunate to live next to the Guggen HQ, you can come pick some up right there as well. If you're wondering where that's at, is in Crum, Texas, right off of 380. You can also check out a huge selection of favorite rods right there at Guggen HQ. So at this point, we are like a full-blown uh, tackle store in there. I mean, we're not just making videos. We're packing tackle in there, and I've been pleased to see a bunch of y'all come in from all over and uh, be in there in the store, and just, it's a really cool thing. LFD! Yes, sir. Do you catch any more out there? I caught one big brim. One big brim? Yep. Okay, doesn't count. We tied for the day. But we tied in numbers. You definitely beat me in size LFD. Guys, give it up. Hit the like button for father and son fishing, but my dad's still getting after it out here. He, he outfished me today, plus he just stayed out here longer. He, he had more dedication. I had to come talk to you guys on the camera, but he got after it. I enjoy these times fishing with my dad, especially in these, these later years. We have so many stories to share, so it's just good times. Time for me to head into some AC and eat some bluebell ice cream because it is summer in Texas, y'all. If you want to stay tuned for more action, go ahead and subscribe right here to the channel and check out some of the new merch, new Eat Sleep Dangle shirts available now. Link down in the description. Love you guys. See you on the next day.